Hey everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by Tupvid.com. We're going to talk about the color range feature in Photoshop because you should just really know how to use it. It's really useful and I think you're going to like it. Before we get into it, I'm selling a course over on my website. There's a link for it in the top button. Everyone hates commercials. Go check it out. Let's get on with the tutorial. Uh, color range. Select color range. And, uh, well, we can do a bunch of things here. First and foremost, we can select any range of colors from the reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas. And when you do that, let's just go with, well, we got it set to yellows. Let's just choose the yellows. You can see in our little preview, we're just going to select those yellows. In fact, if I go to like cyan, you can see it completely changes. But let's uh, stick with yellows here. We can't really make any other changes. Uh, go ahead and hit OK. We get our selection. You can see it looks like not very much is selected, but that's just how Photoshop works with selections. If uh, if too much is feathered or it's semi-transparent, it doesn't really show up with the marching ants. Just trust it. It's there. Go ahead and choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and let's go with, uh, let's just go with the good old Hue Saturation. Why not? Hit OK. And you can see what happens here over in the Layers panel. Our selection is converted to a layer mask. If I Alt or Option click the layer mask, we can see all this grayish stuff is going to allow whatever changes we make on this adjustment layer to shine through. Uh, so let's say we want to change the color of the yellow trees to maybe more of uh, an orangey color. Yeah, just different season, right? Something like that. No biggie. We can always increase the saturation as well. Maybe we don't really want to change the hue. We just want to make it a little bit more of a, add some zip to the yellow, so to speak. Uh, there we go. That, that quickly, that easily, we targeted the yellow trees and we boosted the yellow. So this can be a very effective tool for just targeting a, a bit of color like that. I'm going to delete that adjustment layer. Let's look at something else. Uh, select color range. We can also, aside from selecting colors, we can select tones. So we can select the highlights, midtones, or shadows. So highlights, as you can see, well, we're not selecting much, but we have a range slider and also a fuzziness slider now. So I can increase the range and say select not just the very, very brightest of highlights, which would be the back of this camper, as you can see there, uh, but maybe also the road and some of the brighter colors in the trees. Hit OK, and you can see we've selected a much wider area, and maybe we want to do something like uh, apply a curves adjustment and make all those bright areas a little bit brighter, right? Maybe add a little contrast to them, something like that. So there's before, there's after. We've just kicked up the brightness of the brightest parts of our images. Uh, the brightest part of our image, excuse me. Uh, select color range. Let's go back to it. So we can select any of the tones. You can also just straight up select skin tones. It it doesn't really work that well, if I'm being completely honest with you. I mean, I love you, Adobe, but skin tones, It sometimes it works great, but most of the time it's not that great. I'll just be honest with you. Out of gamut's kind of interesting. Out of gamut allows you to select, well, let me just show you here. Uh, under view, you can turn on your gamut warning and this really works um, when you have set up, you know, a, a, a print profile. I'm sorry, that's what I was trying to think of it. Uh, the print profile, you can have your gamut warning to show you kind of what colors are out of gamut. In this case, we got some colors that are out of gamut. And we can quickly target them under color range by just choosing to target all the stuff that's out of gamut. Hit OK, and you can see all that stuff that shows up in the gamut warning, sure enough, is targeted. And we can do something like, I don't know, just throw a vibrance adjustment, uh, a vibrance saturation adjustment layer on there and maybe reduce vibrance until it falls within gamut, right? You can see it start disappearing. Um, yeah, you can mess around with it and see what works. Uh, but for those of you that are printing out of Photoshop, that can be very, very useful. Uh, just figured I would tack that in there as a little bonus. Let's go back to select color range. You also, and most importantly, the one that I use most is the sampled colors option. We also have a fuzziness slider here. To explore this more, let's use a different photo. Let's go with Smoke Bomb Guy. I want to change the color of the Smoke Bomb smoke, but nothing else in the image, as much as I can at least. You could say, hey, why not just throw a hue saturation adjustment layer in there, target the red channel, and slide the hue any which way. Look at that. Hey, look, pink smoke, great. The problem is there's a lot of other kind of reddish elements in the back uh, that I don't like, and that the color of that is also being changed. I could go in with a mask and just tone all that down, sure, but... What if we begin by creating a more effective mask with color range and then apply that same transformation or that same adjustment, I should say. Let's go select color range. Now, what I'm going to do is I don't want to select my out of gamut stuff. I want to choose sampled colors. And I'm going to begin by sampling the smoke. So you can see here, if I click on the smoke, I'm getting a lot of the smoke. But the problem is I'm not getting all of the smoke. And I want 
all of the smoke. So you can hold down the shift key and you can see there next to the eyedropper, right, the little plus shows up. You can begin clicking around the smoke to really make sure you have like all that smoke selected. Now, if you increase the fuzziness, you can see we're actually gonna end up selecting a lot of the background of the image as well. We don't want that. So we wanna tone down the fuzziness as much as we can to keep as much of the smoke bomb as we can and get rid of as much as the uh, and and have as much of the background disappear as possible. We can go in and, and gently mask away some of this stuff later on. It's no big deal. But we want to get as good or as as precise a selection as we can. And the fuzziness slider is going to help us with that. So hit OK. You can see we've got a cool uh, selection here. We can go hue saturation adjustment and let's try just adjusting the hue saturation. See, we don't even really need to just target the reds. We can target everything and make the smoke bomb pink or blue or. Uh, I don't know, we can make it any color we want, really. Let's go green, desaturate the green a little bit, maybe darken the green up a little bit. Eh, I'm not really digging that. I think I'm going to roll with... Uh I'm going to roll with some good old pink. Well, actually, I'm kind of cheating if I go pink. Maybe I'll go like this blue-purple, because look at this. Let's just take a closer look at this here. Let's zoom in. Look at all that stuff that's missing, right? So color range did not pick up everything. But because color range did such a good job, one of the things we can do is just grab the brush tool... Set the mode to normal, opacity of 100. We can just go in and paint with white all in there and just fill all that stuff in. That wasn't stuff we needed color ranges help selecting anyway. Um, I suppose it could have done a little bit of a better job, like down here, selecting the edges of the smoke, things like that. You can see the car color kind of changed, so let's paint with black to get rid of that. Uh, anything else that may appear, we can alt-click on our mask, by the way, option-click on the Mac, and we can just really paint with black over anything that we know is supposed to be solid black, right? This all here should be solid black. Just get rid of anything here. I'm not going to come too close to my, my smoke plume. Um, and obviously up there on top of the smoke, it'd be great to have a little bit more. So it would it would probably just take messing around with uh, the, the color range even a little bit more. Let's delete the adjustment layer. Let's check out one last kind of final tip about uh, color range. Let's add the uh, hue saturation adjustment and do what we originally did. A little bit more precise with the reds channel. And target it and go, let's go with like a hot pink, right? Cool. Now what we can do is select the mask and go select color range. We also have the color range option up here there. Let's go color range and just choose the smoke and hold down shift. And we're just going to paint over the smoke. I'm going to choose the edge of the smoke as well. Right, so there you can see I specifically got the edge of the smoke. And what did it do? It selected a ton of the rest of the image. So let's try to corral it in a little bit using fuzziness. All right, and what it's going to do is we're going to have to manually paint in over the smoke plume a little bit there and fix up some of the background. But we got a pretty good selection of the smoke. Hit OK. That mask is automatically applied to that adjustment layer, right? We can Alt click on the mask. And we can make our brush tool a little bit bigger here. Uh, we can paint with black. Just get rid of all this stuff up here. Maybe I want to right click and make my brush a little bit harder. That way I know I'm not getting it all over my smoke. All right, I'm just coming in and through here. And you can see it, 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 it really needs a lot of, uh, it needs a lot of help in there. But it's really not too, too bad. Uh, and for a selection that you can make very, very quickly, not too bad. You can hit Command or Control L to open up levels, by the way, and you can increase the blacks. Right, we can just really get rid of some of that stuff. Hit OK. And then what we want to do is come into the smoke plume itself and paint with white and just paint over all this stuff that's just kind of smudgy and schmutzy. There we go. Let's Alt get out of our mask. And that's pretty good. I mean, there's a little part of the smoke there maybe where we need to paint with white and fix that up. Yep, looks like it. But all things considered, very quickly we're able to get a very, very accurate uh, mask, a selection to mask an adjustment layer to our image and very realistically change the color of something like that smoke, which getting a selection of that smoke would have been very difficult under normal circumstances. So color range, really powerful feature in Photoshop and for color range and changing the color of smoke bombs, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Well, here we are at the end of the video where I promote my channel. Go ahead and hit the like button for this video. You know you want to. Also, subscribe. Little red button right down there. Subscribe to this channel. You'll never miss another one of these videos in the future. That'd be pretty awesome. And also head over to tutvid.com. Tutvid.com. Sign up for the newsletter. You'll get 30 free time-saving features and tips. A little guide that I made emailed right to you when you sign up. And also follow me. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I got a bunch of links down in the description. Social media. You can follow my every move. You can move with me. Well, you wouldn't want to move with me. Wow, what a time to be alive.